U.S. officials are speaking out after a Belarus fighter jet forced a flight from Greece to Lithuania to land. Belarusian authorities then arrested a 26-year-old dissident journalist, Roman Protasevich. So President Biden called the diversion, quote, a direct affront to international norms and called for his release. But as Glenn Greenwald points out, these tactics are nothing new. Under the Obama administration in 2013, the U.S. forced the landing of a Bolivian plane in an attempt to find Edward Snowden. Journalist Glenn Greenwald, he joins us now to discuss. Glenn, let's talk about what actually happened here and then part of the problem with condemning that action by the international community. Sure. So, you know, obviously the actions by the government of Belarus in forcing a commercial jet to land in Minsk with the ex clear purpose to arrest a passenger on that plane who's living in exile in Lithuania is both lawless and dangerous. That goes without saying. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. The problem becomes, though, from a Western perspective, that in 2013, as you said, actions very similar, in fact, arguably even more lawless and more dangerous, were perpetrated by the same countries now condemning Belarus. Um, in the case of what happened on Sunday, they claimed that there was a bomb potentially on the plane in order to persuade the pilot to land in Minsk rather than to go proceed 30 minutes to his destination in Lithuania. It was pretty clearly a sham designed to lure the plane to, to Belarus. But in 2013, what they did was a different tactic, but the same intended result, which was the plane of Evo Morales was flying back from Russia to Bolivia, and the United States convinced four different European countries that Edward Snowden was on that plane with President Morales traveling back with him to Bolivia in order to get asylum. And all four of those countries withdrew in midair their consent for that plane to fly through their airspace, knowing that it would force the plane to land in Austria because it didn't have enough gas to find another route. And the whole point of that operation was to then enter the plane and nab Edward Snowden out of the clutches of the Bolivians and put him in prison. So the parallels are quite clear and obvious. And what was the political pushback, if there was any, to those actions by the U.S. and the EU? It was, I think people have forgotten because it's eight years ago and, and especially with the Trump era, that's many, many lifetimes ago, politically speaking. But it really shocked the international community what had happened because this was the head of a sovereign state. So a lot of people are, are saying, well, these actions are different because Belarus inter intercepted a passenger jet, uh, a passenger airlines, while the United States and Europe only forced a presidential plane to land. But in a lot of respects, it's more shocking to force the plane of a sovereign leader, a democratically elected leader of a South American country, forcing his plane to the ground is an attack on Bolivian sovereignty. That's why it caused all of South America virtually, including countries that weren't necessarily aligned politically or ideologically with Bolivia and the government of Evo Morales to really vehemently denounce and protest this on the grounds as for example, the president of Argentina, Christina Kircher, said it was redolent of the kind of imperialism and colonialism under which Latin America had lived for so long that they thought they had liberated themselves from. The idea that a presidential plane, a government plane, can just be forced to land by a combination of Europe and the United States because they want to nab somebody who they believe falsely, as it turned out, was on the plane was something that almost the entire international community vehemently denounced. Even in the United States, the press coverage was kind of remarkable because President Obama, when he had been asked about Edward Snowden, this was the time when Snowden was stuck in the Moscow airport, unable either to leave on a flight to another country or exit the airport and enter Russia because Russia hadn't given him asylum. So it was this weird time when he was suspended in this uncertain no man's land in, in the Moscow airport. Obama was saying things like, we don't really care that much. We're not going to I'm not going to deploy fighter jets in order to get some 29 year old hacker. And the reality was the United States government was taking very extreme steps to threaten other countries in Europe and South America who were considering giving asylum to Snowden that they would face serious punishment. But this was like 
just a bridge beyond anything that anyone thought the United States would do, that it was really regarded as something that extreme. Right. And Glenn, why does this matter in the context of now the U.S. and the EU are going after Belarus? You see the EU being like, we've got a lot of money for Belarus the moment that they become a democracy. Let's put it in that context, too. I mean, obviously, you cannot understand what's happening here without the context of the ongoing war, Cold War, essentially, that has been renewed between the West on the one hand and Russia on the other for the battle for influence in that region. The West is eager to make sure that every former Soviet Republic, every country near Russia, including Ukraine, joins NATO, despite the promise of Bush 41 when the Berlin Wall fell to Gorbachev that NATO would never move beyond any one inch east beyond Germany. It's now gone, you know, NATO has gone all the way up to the Russian border. Obviously, in Ukraine, the United States played a key role in removing the pro-Russian leader and replacing him with a pro-United States government. So, you know, the United States is allies with countries who are at least as repressive and, in fact, much more so than Belarus, including, for example, their close allies in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, mm -hmm. Qatar, the United Arab Emirates. This is about a geopolitical conflict for influence. It has nothing to do with human rights. Human rights or international law is the pretext being used for the United States to go after a regime that it dislikes because they perceive it being too close to the Kremlin. That's right. It's not a true Glenn Greenwald segment until a barking dog gets involved somehow. <laughs> um, <laughs> People complain if my dogs don't make an appearance. They'll complain. Exactly. That's true. Exactly. So, um, well, you point out, I mean, what really underscores the hypocritical nature of this whole situation is, of course, Jen Psaki brought out to um, go after Belarus for what is obviously dangerous, unconscionable actions. She's the very same person who was the Obama State Department spokesperson who was brought out to defend the Obama administration wow. doing exactly the same thing. Just talk about that piece, Glenn. Yeah, I mean, Jen Psaki, people forget, was the State Department spokesperson under the Obama administration, and she was the one who was tasked with answering questions about the role the United States played in the forced downing landing of President Morales' plane. And she basically just does that did then what she does now, which is completely obfuscate. She refused to even answer questions about whether the U.S. had a role, although she just admitted enough, saying, of course, we were in contact with these countries about the potential that Snowden was on that Snowden was on that plane. Obviously, it was the U.S. that fed that false intelligence to the Europeans then and then encouraged or demanded that they shut their airspace to force that plane to land. They were desperate to get their hands on Snowden. It was Jennifer Saki who had to defend it. And now here she is leading the way in denouncing Belarus for having done something extremely similar. And I think it underscores this important fact, which is, especially in the Trump era, this new Cold War term, whataboutism, which in the Cold War used to be used by the United States whenever they would criticize the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union would say, who are you to criticize us? You're supporting mm -hmm. all these dictators. You're engaged in all these human rights abuses. And the government would say, oh, ignore that criticism. That's whataboutism. That's just designed to distract attention away from what they've done by putting the microscope on us. It kind of disappeared for a few decades, and it was brought back during the Trump era when Democrats and the media would say, look at what Trump is doing, it's unprecedented. And you would say, no, actually, it's not unprecedented. The Democrats do it, other countries do it. They would say, oh, that's whataboutism. It's mm. designed to prevent an inquiry in that word into whether or not the United States government is actually abiding by the standards it's purporting to impose on others. It's an incredibly powerful propagandistic term and shield that the United States government has convinced millions of its citizens to invoke to render that inquiry off limits about what the United States does in the world as well. That's actually yeah. a very profound point. Glenn, always great to have you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Glenn. Good to be with you guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We'll have more rising for you after this.